Good morning. How are you? Grade 9. Today, inshallah, we will start with lesson 2 from chapter 13, ribosomes and protein synthesis. Let's start with the first point, which is talking about the genetic code. What do you mean by genetic code? The genetic code is the sequence of the DNA inside each cell. And to form the protein from this genetic code, you have to transcribe it into a RNA. So the DNA must change into RNA or transcribed into RNA. This transcription information contains a code for ma making protein. So let's start with the transcription process. This is the DNA sequence, which is A, T, C, C, A, G. It will be transcribed into RNA, which is, will be A will face T in the DNA, while in the RNA must face U, T will face A, C, G, G, U, and C. Okay, this is the process of transcription. We transcribe the DNA into R and A. Is that clear? Then we will take the RNA and translate it to form the protein. Okay? Protein are made up by joining amino acids together into long chain called polypeptide. So, as many as 20 different amino acids are commonly found in polypeptide, the specific amino acids in polypeptide and the order in which they are joined determine the properties of different protein. So, the sequence of amino acids also influences the shape of the protein, which is in turn determine its function. So, this is the general structure for the amino acid, for all of the amino acids. We have this general structure, this is the amino group, this is the central carbon, and we have the carboxyl group and hydrogen here, and we have R branch. R differ from one amino acid into another. If we check alanine, it's CH3, while if we check serine, it is CH2, uh, CH2OH, and we have multiple amino acids with different R group. We have commonly 20 amino acids. If we want to join two amino acids together, we have to form a peptide bond. And this peptide bond formed between the carboxylic end and the amino group. And this formation will fo form the peptide bond. Is that clear? Hopefully, everything is clear till now. So, as we learned in the last section, RNA contains four different bases, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil. These bases form a language or a genetic code, which is ACGU. The genetic code is read with three letters, so each time we will read three letters in the sequence, and that's how we will form the genetic code. Each three letters will form the codon. So, if we start with AUG, this is a codon. AAC, this is another codon, and UCU is another codon. So a codon consists of three consec consecutive bases that specify a single amino acid to be added to the polypeptide chain. Each codon in the genetic code language specifies a particular amino acid that is to be placed on polypeptide chain. There are 64 possible codons in the genetic code. So we have 20 amino acids. And the possibility is that these 20 amino acids will join together to form the codon, three, codon, three uh, spaces to form a codon, will give me 64 possible codons in the genetic code. Some amino acids can be specified by more than one codon. So I can specify the amino acid by more than 20 codons, sorry, by more than one codon. So I have 20 amino acids that will be formed from 64 codons. This circular table, as you can see, this is a table, a circular one, to give you the possibilities of the amino acids, codons. So we will start from the center. We have G, A, C, U, and then we will go outer to the outer layer, or the middle one. We have also the four amino acids here, and finally we have the four amino acids in each one of those um, nucleotides. So if we start with U, 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 this is a phenylalanine, okay? U, U, C, also phenylalanine. If we start with C, A, C, this is a histidine. C, A, U, 
also a histidine. We have some of the codons are uh, known as specific codons uh, like AUG. AUG. This is called methanine and it is known as start codon. You have to erase this codon, okay? Why we have another codons which are stop codons that will stop the transcription and translation process. Let's then move to the translation. So to summarize, the sequence of nucleotide based on the mRNA molecule is a set of instructions that gives the order in which amino acids should be joined to produce a polypeptide. So I have a sequence and this sequence is mature sequence without an entrance and I will translate this sequence into a proteins. So ribosomes use the sequence of codons in mRNA to assemble amino acids into a polypeptide chain. The decoding of an mRNA message into a protein is a process known translation. So the decoding from the mRNA into a protein is the decoding. Let's start with the decoding. This is the mRNA that will enter, that will exit the nucleus. So the mRNA were in the nucleus and it will exit the nucleus and is transcribed in the nucleus and will be released to the cytoplasm for the translation process. Then translation begins when a ribosome attached to mRNA molecule in the cytoplasm. As the ribosome reads each codon of mRNA, tRNA is directed to bring the specified amino acids into the ribosome. So this is the mRNA, this is the ribosomal RNA, okay, mRNA, R and A, ribosomal RNA, and this is the tRNA. This is the codons that is found on the mRNA, like A, U, G, and this codon, it's called anticodon, that will come from the tRNA. It will face its U, A, C, that will bring the M, E, T. The M, E, T, which is the methionine, which is called as start. Uh, starting codon, okay? Is that clear how we will work here in the process of the translation? So each tRNA molecule will carry three unpaired bases called anticodon. So each tRNA will carry here the anticodon and in the same time it will carry the amino acid that is found, it's any yani complementary to this um, anticodon. So UAC, which is facing AUG, will bring the methionine, which is starting codon or starting amino acid, then phenylalanine with UUC, with anticodon AAG, and finally AAA will face anticodon UUU, which is giving us the lysine, okay? Which is complementary to one mRNA codon. The ribosomes moves along the mRNA strands and reads it. There are several bonding sites on the ribosomes, and you have to know that each tRNA will bind in a specific location. Okay? If you can see, for the phenylalanine, here, the second tRNA, the phenylalanine uh, carrier, and we have also the AA. G anticodon, okay? The ribosomes help form peptide bonds. So at each binding site here, in each time, there will form a peptide bond between the previous amino acids and the newly formed amino acids. As, and as you can see, the peptide bonds here uh, form between many amino acids to form a polypeptide, uh, polypeptide a sequence, okay? As the ribosomes moves along the RNA strand, the process continues. The ribosomes attach each amino acid to the growing chain. The synthesis of polypeptide chain continue until the ribosome reach a stop codon. As you can see here, UGA is a stop codon. Once the uh, ribosome reach the stop codon, it will stop the translation of the mRNA. So then we have the small polypeptide which will form proteins after the process of formations and maturation. So molecular biology seeks to explain living organisms by studying them at the molecular level using molecules like DNA and RNA and forming of protein. 
The central dogma, which is the most important thing to know about the ribosomes and protein synthesis, which link the DNA change into RNA and protein, the transcription and translation between the DNA to RNA and protein, respectively. We have also something called gene expression, which is one of the heredity aspects, is the way in which DNA, RNA, and proteins are involved in putting genetic information into action in living cells, and at the same time, DNA carries information for specifying the traits of an organism. So, most genes contain instructions for assembling proteins that is required for multifunctions in our body. So, this is the DNA. Then we will get the mRNA by the transcription. The mRNA will release from the nucleus to the cytoplasm where we can find the ribosomes. And the tra translation process will start to form the proteins. And once the protein is translated, it will be mature to form a mature protein that will have a specific function. Okay, we have an example. A gene can code for an enzyme that is needed to produce a pigment for a color in a flower. So this enzyme will, affect, will be affected if there is any change mutation in the gene or any change mutation for the DNA. Okay? And now we are finished. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day. Great. Bye-bye.